I love this watch so much. But wait, how did we get here? I'm gonna take you through our roller coaster of emotions today and how I went from thinking that the Apple Watch Ultra was the best thing since sliced bread to looking elsewhere. I have come to a decision for myself and I tried to structure this video in a way that I think will help you if you are on the fence between these two brands or considering an upgrade. Roll the intro. There's no intro, we don't like to waste people's In some parts of this video, my hay fever is really bad right now, so apologies for how I sound right now. And this video is not sponsored, I made this video because of you. So many of you have suggested that I should try the Garmin, and a lot of you have been following my journey so far as well, and you know, it's been a lot of fun. I'm Alex, and I do down to earth tech videos. And to start off with, I was pretty happy with the Apple Watch Ultra, you know? I definitely fell for Apple's reverse psychology of you have to be like a, an ultra marathon runner or some sort of elite athlete to get this watch. So I fell for that and bought it. As you can guess, I'm not running marathons or climbing Everest. And I never even put on a scuba diving mask. Okay, maybe I did once. I'm like mm. as standard dad-like as they come. But it looks like I wasn't alone. In that video where I shared my experience with the Apple Watch Ultra, looks like a lot of you were on the same boat and ended up buying this watch. That video is one of the most popular videos on the channel. But after a while, I'd say after a month or so, I did start to have some battery issues. This wasn't impacting everyone, but it was bad enough for me to notice. I shared my battery woes in a video thinking I was alone in this, but it turned out that a lot of people were experiencing the same issue. What I learned during that time was that a fresh install of the watch and removing some of the apps that get automatically installed kind of seemed to help the battery life. But after a while, you know, after a few days or a couple of weeks, it would be back to being bad again. But then watchOS 9.2 came out and wow, you know, that update so far was the best for me. It really made the battery issues go away, my notifications were consistent and everything was working fine, which you know, gave me a lot of confidence in the watch again. They added crash detection as well in the updates, but thankfully I never needed that. Right now we're on 9.5.1 software and I'm getting about two days of, you know, two full days of battery. If I'm fairly active and using the watch to track my sleep, you know, two days max maybe three days if I'm not as active or sleep tracking, but that's not enough for me. You know, for, for how much we pay for this watch, two days is not enough, right? This is meant to be a, an extreme watch, right? You're meant to be in a mountain, in isolation or whatever, and two days is not gonna get you very far. Now let's talk a little bit about the fitness tracking stuff, right? I'm not a fitness mad person, I'm trying to stay active and exercise regularly, but I do care about my trends and looking at the data, right? To figure out what I need to improve on when I do work out. That's the workout out of the way. But the more I used the Apple Watch Ultra for tracking exercise, the more I realized that I was missing some data. Sure, it's all there if you look for it, and with watchOS 10 coming up, there's a lot of cool features being introduced, like topology maps, which has been missing. But one, it doesn't look like they made a lot of changes to the workout app. And two, at the time of recording, it's not really launched yet, so we're gonna have to wait a few months for it. What I don't have to wait is for my food now. Lunchtime. Not to mention that I now have mostly Android phones, which makes it interesting, right, when using the Apple Watch. Basically, I had to get a burner iPhone 13 mini just to sync the watch. But anyway, that's not Apple's fault, right? It's my preference right now. But I'm quite happy with the setup that I've got going here. With watchOS 10, it does look like Apple is making the Watch Ultra, you know, an even better smartwatch but not necessarily a better sports watch. So I kept trying other apps like Athletic, which has been fantastic. If you are sticking with Apple Watch, you know, honestly, I definitely recommend you look at the app or work outdoors as well. Amazing apps really that will give you a bit more than the usual workout app on the Watch Ultra. Now, this is the turning point in this whole story. After my six months later review of the Apple Watch Ultra and my sort of lackluster feeling towards the Watch Ultra, Many of you asked me, you know, why don't you try the Garmin? And you know, it's a lot of money to throw at a watch, so I was quite reluctant to go out and spend another few hundred on a watch. But I felt like I gave the Watch Ultra enough of a chance and I was really, really wanting to try something else. And so many of you suggested the Garmin and one of you was kind enough to send me this one out, you know, just to try out. I mean, I love this community that we're building here and Lee, you are an absolute legend for doing this. I'm so grateful to you because your gesture Know, kind of open my eyes to Garmin and the options that they offer. But you know me, there are major things on this watch that I absolutely love and are way above and beyond what the Watch Ultra can do. And I look like an idiot wearing two watches right now. But equally, there are things on the Watch Ultra that I just can't ignore. They're just too good to ignore. And having said all that, I think I found the perfect compromise and it's not the Phoenix. Let me explain. Actually, just before I do that, just a reminder to like this video if you're enjoying it. And after this video, have a look around the channel. And if you like my stuff, you know, it would be awesome if you subscribed. I'm here at least once a week with a new down to earth tech video for you. And so is that cow by the looks of it. This is the Phoenix 6X Pro Titanium Solar. This thing is an absolute menace, you know, in a good way. It's built like a tank and it looks gorgeous. 
amazingly, it makes my watch ultra look a little bit, you know, childish in a way. I've done triathlons before, but you know, I'm not really a guy who goes out and run marathons every month or actually ever, <laughs> or, you know, and I don't do any extreme sports at all. I'm active, I do like football every week and I, you know, go for runs and stuff, but wearing this watch makes me feel like I could run marathons and I could climb Everest, right? This thing is a beast. And you're probably asking, but why did you say earlier that the Phoenix wasn't the answer for you? Well, this is where the Epix 2 comes in. I'll do a proper review on this watch uh, once I spend a few more weeks with it, wearing it and trying it, but really, I just miss the display on the Watch Ultra, you know? It's, it's just such a beautiful display. There are many things that I prefer now on the Garmin, but I just couldn't get used to the memory in pixel display. It's bright enough if you go outside, it's you know absolutely perfect. You know The sun actually makes it look brighter, which is uh, uh, counterintuitive. If you've never used a smartwatch with a, you know, with a bright display like the Apple Watch, you know, you probably find this fine and you're never gonna notice any issues. But I just found it really difficult, you know, after so many years of wearing Apple Watches to go back to a display that is not as bright and not as colorful. I mean, that Phoenix is plenty bright. The memory in pixel display is surprisingly bright in the direct sunlight. But there's a lot to be said about that deeper black and more colorful display that you get on the Epix. The downside that you could say is that the Epix does look a little bit less serious, but you could say that that's a preference thing, right? I am really loving the Epix too. The question now is, you know, should I go for the Pro instead? But from a features perspective, I'm pretty happy with this. Maybe I'll wait for the Epix 3. And sure, the uh, Epix doesn't have the same battery as the Phoenix, but come on, who needs a month? <laughs> of battery right i'm not going into the wilderness for for a month lovely to know that it's there anything more than four or five days is a bonus for me and you're getting six days um with the epic so far i mean it, that's what it says on the watch itself i haven't really seen if it's gonna last six days but that's amazing right in comparison to the apple watch ultra which for me anyway is only lasting like two days yeah, that's an amazing improvement and i think it comes down to your taste as well i mean they are fairly similar watches but I think, yeah, the, the Epix is a little bit less, you know, aggressive, if you like. As you can tell, I'm loving this watch. But remember what I said, this is gonna be a roller coaster. You know, it's a shame really that Garmin watches for all they cost, you know, how little smartwatch features they offer. Okay, let me rephrase that. There are enough smartwatch features, but they're just not as polished and in some cases, just straight up don't work. I'll go through some of those features that I think are important, but I've also asked my fellow YouTube creator, Pete, who's been trying out the Garmin as well, and here's what he thought. But Alex, this Garmin watch cost me over 700 pounds. Now, it's a great watch, there's no doubt about that, but for 700 pounds, I was kind of expecting something a little more than, what to me, feels a little bit more like a modern version of the, uh, Classic Casio watch, you know, the one with the kind of little keyboard and everything. Buttery B-roll for you. It almost feels as though that this is what one of the best smartwatches would have looked like today if Apple hadn't have created the Apple Watch. But that might change, right? And in typical fashion, since spending over £700 on the Phoenix 7X, they've released an even more expensive Phoenix 7 Pro and Epix Pro, which have, you know, beautiful OLED screens, which look beautiful, but it doesn't look like the interface has really changed. It still looks like you control everything with the buttons on the side. So I think Garmin needs a significant software overhaul, which for now a, a nearly 1,000 pound smartwatch, I kind of expect the best of breed for that price. What do you think? Thanks, Pete. I've got to say, you know, for that price, I really have to agree with you that more is needed on the software side of things, like contactless payments, right? I'm not sure what it's like in the US, but here in the UK, one of the most popular banks is Barclays and it doesn't work with it. So for me, I'm like, okay, I'll look past it and it's just a case of me accepting that I just can't pay with my watch. But unfortunately, that's not all. I have a lot of smart home and car stuff and you know, lots of utilities that I really use every day and the Watch Ultra has helped me with that. Like remotely starting my car with an app on the Watch Ultra or opening the garage door or selecting different scenes for my Philips Hue at home. And there are plenty of other utility apps like, you know, a one password, not to mention the huge elephant in the room, which is the ability to make phone calls. It's not a feature that you use every day or typically even care about until you go out for a run without your smartphone and an important call or message comes in. And of course, there's a social aspect as well of the Apple Watch, which is a lot of fun for a lot of people, you know, to compete against your friends and family. And even when it comes to basics, like adding music to the watch, it's a huge rigmarole with the Garmin. You know, it was a little bit easier on the Phoenix somehow, but on the Epix, it keeps asking me to install Garmin Express on my computer. And even after that, it just didn't quite work properly for me. And the interface on that, well, 
it sucks. Having said that though, when you look at the dashboard that you get with the Garmin, you know, the data and insights that you really care about, wow, you know, this is much better on the Garmin. You know, just look at all this data, you know, all in one place and very well structured. You know, this is something that I feel like I've been missing out on the Apple Watch. Of course, all of these watches will give you enough of these data points anyway, in a really nice way. But in my opinion, I just thought it was much easier to find all these data points on the Garmin than it was on the Apple Watch. If you're preparing for a marathon or you're just doing some training, you know, you really want to see your progress, you know, in the easiest and most, you know, concise way possible. Just as an aside, actually, the iPad OS 17 will have a better health app, apparently, which will give us a better display. But again, that's not out for a few months yet. So hopefully that, that will improve things. And what about the ecosystem? System. Yeah, it's a problem. As someone who's been using Android phones, it's been so nice to actually, you know, have a lot of things syncing up between the phone and the watch, but I still use MacBooks and lots of other Apple devices. And controlling things like my lights at home and here in the studio or unlocking my computers, yeah, this is where the Garmin watches will kind of fall short. But I see these things as compromises, right? They're trade-offs that I'd say, you know, there's merit in the ecosystem, of course, if you care enough about those things. Do you care more about that all singing and dancing ecosystem? Or do you care more about having excellent data points about your sports and exercise tracking and an amazing battery life? And for a lot of people, you know, you care about both, but the Watch Ultra just gives you enough to satisfy your needs. And that's cool. And maybe, you know, of course, you can make phone calls with this. So what have I learned and what did I decide in the end? Well, what this experience has taught me so far is that the Apple Watch Ultra is 100% the better smartwatch. No question about it, in my opinion. But the Garmin, whether the Phoenix or the Epix, is the better sports watch. I'd love for Apple to bring more of the sports watch features to the Watch Ultra, including a better battery as well. And I'd love Garmin, like Pete said, right, to really step up their game on the software side of things because it does cost a lot of money for the software that we're getting here. At the very least, I'd love to see a cellular option on the Garmin so you know, I don't have to carry my phone with me everywhere. For now, I'm only gonna use the Garmin Epix 2 for most days and really only use the Watch Ultra when I'm not training or exercising. I will though install watchOS 10 on it and give that a go and I'll let you know how I get on. But the Garmin is gonna be my main watch for a little while. The thing is, I got the Garmin Itch now and I'm considering whether I should get the Epix Pro next or wait for the Gen 3. Maybe I'll do a video about that actually. Epix 2 versus Epix 2 Pro or wait for the Epix 3. Pro. Lee, thank you so much once again for sending me your watch because without that, this video wouldn't be possible and opening my eyes to Garmin as well. It was indeed only a matter of time. See you soon. <laughs> Sleep. It's okay. Yeah, just talking to myself. <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Where was I?